بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ساس حريدان وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله I'm good how are you Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. Today we're going to do a reaction. And inshallah, the intention oh, is... Response, yeah, response, that's what I was just response. about to say. The intention is to sort of give a response. We'll do our best. I definitely heard it and so uh, yeah, maybe we should uh, give this a go, inshallah. So should we just get straight into it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So guys, you know how I was wearing hijab. Um, not long ago actually, uh, and then I removed it due to my headaches and migraines. Now, when I started wearing hijab, it was because I had a feeling, I was excited, um, I never felt like I wanted to wear hijab before, so it was really, really like um, empowering. Now, now that I haven't been wearing it for a long time, I tried it on the other day, and I almost felt like it, like, ugh, so weird, like as if it restricted my personality, like I put the hijab on, um, and all of a sudden I felt like I couldn't be Shaz. And I wanted to know if any other women struggle with this when they wear a hijab. Like, do you guys feel like that? Because I never felt like that before. And I feel like it's because I'm trying to understand it more. I'm trying to understand the purpose, the reasonings, um, why Muslim women cover. Um, I was never educated enough on that. And I'm still searching for answers. So if everyone can share their stories, if they wear hijab, um, why they do, what empowers them. I'm just so intrigued and I really want to learn more. Like, I really do. I don't think it's about just wanting to. I think you have to understand it. So, yeah, please answer. So, subhanAllah, um, there is a lot that was said. Before we get into what was said, though, I just want to put it there that this sister does have quite a following. Um, she has, like, almost 400k um, on Instagram, which is where we just listened to the video. And... Uh, a decent amount on YouTube, can't remember. There was a lot said there, and I, I don't know about you, but I think some of the things that were mentioned are not uncommon. I think a lot of sisters uh, ask questions and say such things. So she did mention that she used to wear hijab, uh, but she took it off due to headaches and migraines. Um, so we don't know what that means, what age she did that at and all the rest of it, but we leave that with the, the people of knowledge. She later on then went on to say that when she put it on, she felt different from when she first started. And I just wanted to address that a wee bit. For me, what that pointed out was the importance of teaching our daughters what hijab is, what it means when they're young, because it really does determine their relationship when they're older. But all aspects of Islam should be a major part of our life, what we do outwardly and inwardly. This should be what we are providing to our kids. You know, so I don't mm-hmm. know if you have anything to say on that. Uh, for me, like the, regarding the headaches thing, first of all, I would say if you are having issues with headaches or migraines, um, you know, because of hijab, get checked out medically because there could be something that's wrong with you that you could be like lacking some kind of nutrients or something, some kind of actual physical deficiency with your, you know, in your physical self, which is causing the headaches. The first thing I would check, though, is how are you wearing your hijab? Because some of the hijab styles that people like to um, you know, use that they think suits them best are not appropriate because maybe they got the hijab on too tight. You could have your pins in the wrong places, for example. There's so many reasons. I mean, for me, like when I sometimes put my niqab on, I find that I can go outside, I put my niqab on, go outside, and then all of a sudden it's like I'm having a headache. And I think to myself, why am I having a headache? And then it will click. Well, you've got your niqab on too tight. And it could just be yeah. a slight adjustment that makes, and immediately I will feel the difference and the headache will stop. And it's because literally yeah. I've tied, tied the niqab too tight or maybe I've put up tight, and especially in a specific place, maybe if you've got something that's t- touching your temple areas as well and pressing against yeah. them, that can yeah. cause you immediate headache. It's not on in a comfortable fitting manner. So you need to adjust the wearing of the, you know, the placement. It could be that you've, you've pressed your ears against it too tightly. You know, it could be certain parts of your head that you're pressing against with your hijab or your niqab that is triggering the actual headache. And once you, you know, adjust it, you wouldn't have that problem, inshallah. So I think that's the first thing definitely to check. It should suit you in the holistic sense, meaning it's actually a comfortable fit where you're not going to be physically harming yourself by wearing it. Okay, so that's the main thing, because don't forget, like, if you haven't been wearing it and if you haven't grown up wearing it, you're not used to wearing it and you don't fully understand the reasons why you're wearing it, but you want to wear it because you realise that it's part of being a Muslim or your Muslim identity, shaitan does not want you to wear your hijab. That's the reality. So 
you will have these yeah. challenges. So you need to try to help yeah. yourself as much as possible. Like I really did like the the part where the sister seemed like really honest. You know, she said, I, I used to wear it. I took it off for X, Y, Z reason. Um, but then when I tried to put it on, I felt a certain way about it. Uh, and I'm trying to learn about it and connect with it. I think that I think that first of all, it is fantastic because I think it's really important that we understand why we do the things we do as Muslims, not just uh, for the obvious reasons, but um, mainly because we need to have the right intention when we are doing actions. Everything we should be doing as Muslims should be for the sake of Allah. That doesn't always come natural, and I say this as a revert because this is stuff that I had to build up and learn. But this is the goal. We should be doing it with Isan. But it takes time to get there. And, and learning about the wisdom behind ruins, I, I guess, is a part of that, isn't it? What do you think sisters should do in situations when they um, are feeling conflicted or uh, feeling certain ways about certain things they have to do as Muslims? Like, what, what advice would you give them? You know, I think the central issue of this is the central issue of everything in our religion, which is Tawheed. You have to bring everything back to that, like the oneness of Allah and who we are, because like this is one of the things she mentioned. She said that after removing it and then putting it back on, she felt like she wasn't herself anymore. Yeah. So who is yourself? Like, who are we as individuals? And people get sick of hearing, oh, yeah, we need to study Aqidah. But no, this is why we need to always study Aqidah. This is why we need to know Allah's names and attributes, because if we understand that we are Allah's slaves, first and foremost, more than like before anything else, then everything else in our lives will fall into place. We will have our priorities in correct order. Unfortunately, a lot of parents who raise their children to wear the hijab do not teach them this. They don't connect the hijab yeah. with the aspect of Tawheed itself. Because yeah. wearing the hijab, we know it's an ayah. It's a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have revelation in the Quran telling us that we need to cover ourselves in a particular fashion. And I'm, I'm not going to go through all the points of hijab, but I think you could put like maybe something on the screen so that people can just actually read it and maybe screenshot yeah. it. This is basically what it is. A lot of Muslims do not know that the hijab itself is not just a scarf that covers your head, okay? So we need to understand that and everybody's got their stages that they go through. But it's important as Muslim women that we understand our role as slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? If we understand that, this is where our, our true empowerment will come from because we know that yeah. we are only doing things to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody else. For me, I think sisters who are having this kind of conflicting um, feelings within themselves and identity crisis issues, you need to really look at that. What is your relationship with Allah? You will never feel more like yourself in your life than when you understand your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you build that connection yeah. with him. I think there's a few issues that I have with, with us. And it's one, you addressed the first point, which is what does it mean to be yourself as a Muslim? You know, and I think what I would add to that part is that we don't just sit in one place in life. We don't just sit in one sense of self in life. We're supposed to be constantly adding to ourselves and growing, etc. which you uh, mentioned, the avenue and how to do that, yeah? But it's also to say that you feel that you couldn't be yourself. Like, for me, this is a fundamental part of hijab. You mentioned hijab is not just about the headscarf. It, hijab is to conceal, and it is to conceal the best parts of yourself. Outwardly, concealing the, the beautiful parts of yourself to outsiders it really is that simple so if you're feeling like you can't be yourself in hijab that's a great thing it means it's working it means that you have connected with your instinctual uh, fitra like the, the the whole concept of hijab the the number one message i would say is don't be scared of that embrace it uh -huh. we shouldn't want everybody to see the best parts of ourselves that's the whole point islam gave us that. Islam gave us that self-respect, that dignity, that privacy, that liberation, that freedom. When we live in a world where there's so many different uh, cultures and ideologies and we live in a world that is really confusing and the morals are really different and sort of shouting over at each other, we as Muslims have to go back to the Quran and Sunnah. This is why the Prophet wasallam told us to hold on to it. Yeah, I thought I would just make that point. I think I, I really think that's an excellent point. I think you really hit the nail on the head too, because people forget the purpose of the hijab. Not everybody needs mm. to know who you are, like your full like character, all these kind of intimate details of your life. This is yeah. something which a woman should have as a privacy. There's this trap where people are feeling like, well, if they don't do certain things, they're not being authentic. But 
what does yeah. authentic mean? Does authentic mean that you need to tell everybody your whole life story and your whole uh, intimate details and your whole business? No, it doesn't. You wouldn't open the contents of your purse and be showing everybody the contents of your purse when you walk down the street to say, look, I'm being yeah. my authentic self. Here I am. You know, look, this is what I've got in my bag. You don't do yeah, that. Yeah. You just don't. Yeah, yeah. If we go back to the video in regards to the sister, you know, I did see the sincerity there with that she really does want to connect with it. And I think that's admirable. I don't know the sister otherwise. I don't know her. I don't follow her. So I don't know much about her. But speaking as a revert, and I'm sure you'll agree, uh, Summer, that things come with time. You know, I definitely mm-hmm. didn't whip on in the cab as soon as I became Muslim. It was something that I worked towards. It was definitely a goal I had in my mind. But it took me some time to get there. Like Sister Summer said er- earlier, uh, increase your knowledge of Allah because that will help your connection with the, the legislation that he's put forward. And then increase your knowledge of what hijab is, like what it really is and the conditions of it. And then slowly, slowly, or, or quickly, quickly, whatever you're capable of, uh, start to implement that change. Uh, there, honestly, there's nothing like it. May Allah guide us, increase us in knowledge and good character and hij- our implementation of hijab and haya and the like. I mean, uh, if you're sincere and, and if you spend a, a, an element of your time increasing your knowledge, inshallah, you'll get there. Inshallah. Should we leave it there? Okay, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika, nashadu an la ilaha anta nastaghfiruka wa na'atubu ilayk. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'll see you all very soon, inshallah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.